गुड मॉर्निंग नमस्कार वेलकम वेलकम टू स्टडी आई क्यू इंग्लिश माई नेम इज भुवन अपूर्व झा एंड दिस इज दिस इज वॉट द एडिटोरियल एज योर डेली मॉर्निंग डोज ऑफ न्यूज एनालिसिस एज वी टेक अ लुक एट द आर्टिकल्स द इन्फॉर्मेशन दैट मैटर्स स्पेशली फ्रॉम द यू पी एस सी परस्पेक्टिव बोथ प्रिलिम्स एंड मीन्स ओके गुड मॉर्निंग बुलबुल गुड मॉर्निंग दीपक हाउ यू गुड मॉर्निंग अर्का थैंक्स फॉर ज्वाइनिंग थैंक्स फॉर ज्वाइनिंग गाइज All right so uh we have three topics like i had mentioned in my telegram group good morning madhusudan madhusudan i've seen your mail and uh, well i'll address your query too okay just give me a minute so uh on the agenda we have three topics uh all the three topics are to do with well two of them are to do with history a bit of art and culture and then finally one that we will do is of extreme relevance hi sai krishna good morning good morning welcome each one of you guys okay so let's begin because uh, well it's the end of the week so let's not uh, you know shift our momentum slow down let's continue the way we have been doing this entire week all right so quickly let's see do you see this photo guys are you able to see this to the best of your uh, you know uh, if you are able to see this just let me know and please identify these two let's see let's start with there we'll make it an interactive class today what are these two structures can someone identify them for me ha uh, if this is a and this is b so identify a and b for me very quickly as this will form the crux of our first discussion today good morning shami mehmed you uh, wish you a very warm uh, good morning too thank you for joining shami bhai all right so have a look at these two forts first what is fort a can someone just quickly inform me and what is identify fort b also and then eventually you'll understand what is this ha huh? if you have been following the news recently especially of ncr new delhi you will know that well new delhi is flooded have you seen that meme hello hello i'm under the water it's it's the same thing yes so new delhi is quite flooded okay things are obviously improving but let's go back into history now so yes b is red fort agreed b is quite easy to identify can someone identify a for me Again, this is the lesser-known fort right in front of Red Fort, by the way. Okay. Good morning, Bhaskar. How are you? Welcome, welcome. You know, if any of you have been to Red Fort, also, you must be able to identify this. So, during my course of my when I used to serve uh, in the government, so I had the opportunity to be a part of the Independence Day celebrations when the Prime Minister of India gives his speech from the ramparts of the Red Fort. So I was a part of that. Uh, whole process for good half a decade so i did have a chance to go through this whole uh, structure in fact i have been around so i can tell you uh, the importance of red fort is understated especially amongst uh, the upsc students all right salim garg fort you are quite okay aap aas paas ho shamim bhai okay we'll have a look at it fine all right so these are the three topics guys we are going to first delve into red fort and river yamuna okay let's look a bit of a history today first like if you were to understand the recent uh, flooding of new delhi so it's obviously to got to do with the western disturbances monsoon all of that playing havoc in delhi so the geographical aspect we'll leave it aside for the time being today we'll just look at the historical aspect all right so we'll look at red fort we'll look at the second fort which well some of you did one one of you did come very close to identifying and then we will see uh, exactly what's the problem you know where ha have we done wrong where have the delights done wrong okay second one is what we'll take a look at is microplastics now i had done a class on this quite some time ago okay uh, but however you find a very important article uh, in uh, down to earth dte okay so if you want to go ahead and read the article well this is from down to uh, down to earth this is from indian express and this is from the hindu So you realize this is what we do you know we pick the most important articles from the various publications right rather than limiting yourself to just say one newspaper or one publication this is the whole point pick out see out the information that is required for your examination all right so go ahead for those of you who haven't really joined me so far on my telegram channel please may I request you quickly head over scan this be a part of this group we are close to 200 members fast growing so come up come up you know join this platform and it will be of immense use to you and third we will look at is the sangam period or the sangam literature both obviously coterminous so we will take a look at what the sangam period was what are the basic basic uh, publications what is the importance 
what are the uh, kingdoms that were associated with Sangam literature, what are the books, which of the books are say lost, which of the books are still there and what is the Tamil Nadu government doing in so far as say promoting this glorious heritage of India. Oh yes, Arka, GS1, GS2, it's all mixed, you know. So eventually, after the uh, uh, after the mains gets over, then you will see, you know, uh, most of you have been asking for say uh, prelims more of those topics, so that will happen soon. I have already taken that into consideration. Good morning, coder. Hi, welcome. Lo after a long time, coder. All right, so this is the photo that I have for you. Now look at this. This photo, this picture, is in fact of several different pictures. <coughs> sorry that are a part of a book called Reminiscences of Imperial Delhi. Okay, You will find the PDF of this online. Go ahead and have a look. So, the Reminiscences of PDF of Delhi was written by Mazhar Ali Khan and you find that this painting, you know, this whole painting project was commissioned by Charles Metcalf. Yeah? Metcalf House in New Delhi, you must be aware of this. So, what you find is, and this is again uh, in the 1700s, so what you find is that there are two forts, A and B, and you find that, well, they are connected by a bridge and that there is a river flowing underneath it, which is exactly what happened a couple of days ago. So, let's go ahead and understand first. The Fort A that I have been showing you is the Salimgarh Fort, this one. Okay, This is the Salimgarh Fort, this is the Red Fort, this is the bridge, which still exists, by the way. If you are driving right past uh, Red Fort, you will actually take your car through this small hole that you see, right? So, Salimgarh Fort, Red Fort and then the bridge, the pier. So, Salimgarh Fort was built by Salim Shah Suri, who was the son of the great Sher Shah Suri, alright? And this was built in 1546, okay? Then you find just 100 years later, after uh, Emperor Shah Jaha, he changed his capital and well, he was tired of Agra for some reason, we will not go into that. But then he decided, let's head to Delhi, okay? which was that time called Shah Jahanabad. All right. So, Emperor Shah Jahan finally commissions the Red Fort and he commissions it in 1648. However, curiously, you know, the misfortune of Shah Jahan was that he never got to spend much time in Red Fort because when the time came to eventually stay, well, he was backstabbed. All right. So, you see this connecting bridge now, guys, this bridge that I am talking about. Guess who built it? Our very own Bahadur Shah Zafar. Okay. Now, what do you realize is that, well, the whole project Shah Jahanabad and Red Fort, it was supposed to have many gates. Okay. So, for example, I will tell you now. So, you have, say, Delhi Gate, Kashmiri Gate, Lahori Gate. All of these gates used to exist. Some of them do even till today, some of them are lost. Now, the folklore, you know, the myth or the folklore show go, so goes that the gate was such that if you just started going in a straight line, you will eventually reach the destination after which the gate is named. Okay. So, Ajmeri gate, well, if you just exit it from the gate and straight line, you can carry it going forward, you will eventually reach Ajmer, Nasirabad. Okay. Similar thing with Lahore. So, all of this was 14 gates were there. However, the most important of them that we have to know is the Khizri Darwaza, which is in fact the water channel. Do you look at this here? So, there is this water channel that you see, right? So, there was a gate where from which you could enter the fort through the water channel, which was known as Khizri Darwaza. Now, the folklore again so goes that when Emperor Shah Jaha finally decided to visit Red Fort, he entered through this water channel, the Khizri Darwaza. At the same time, when the whole uh, Mughal Sultanate and, and Mughal Empire was finally, you know, drawing to a close, the end of it was happening. And so, Bahadur Shah Zafar, when he eventually escaped to Burma, he also used this Khizri Darwaza, this water channel gate. Okay. So, it's in fact a very, uh, you know, it, it's symbolic that it will, the whole Red Fort, the person who started it commissioned the red fort. So, he enters through the water channel at the zenith of say probably the Mughal empire. And then finally, when it is drawing to a close, the same gate is used almost like a cyclical, you know, the circle of life. Okay. So, let us go forward. So, water gate was called Khizri Darwaja and Shah Jahaz had, the original city had 14 gates. 
So what you realize today is that Delhi Gate, Kashmiri Gate, Ajmeri Gate, Turkman Gate and Nigambodh Gate survived. The rest are lost. This is where uh, the funeral is carried out. The pyres are lit. You, it's also called the Nigambodh, Nigambodh Ghat area. Okay. So all the uh, proceedings of say the funeral or the pyre lighting right now is done today on the banks of Yamuna. Okay. So you have Delhi Gate, all of these are still there. Now the rest including Khizri Darwaza have been lost. So the water channel if, is lost. Okay. Now it was through Khizri, Khizri Darwaza that Shah Jahan first entered Red Fort and later Bahadur Shah Zafar escaped to Burma. Okay. Let's get, let's do a bit of history today. Nothing very serious, you know. Let's do a bit of storytelling because eventually you need to understand the history of Delhi also. Interview dene to aapko Shah Jaha road hi jana hai na. Huh? Remember, UPSC is on which road? Shah Jaha road? The headquarters? So, it's it's best advice that you know about at least what Shah Jaha did and what Red Fort is. Okay. So, why was the river Yamuna important now? Why was it that Shah Jaha chose this? You know, you had the river on one side, you had uh, one uh, Fort A on one side, river in the middle, Red Fort on the other side. Why was that? Good morning, Tanu. Welcome, welcome guys. Welcome. Okay, so you see, it serves as a natural barrier, firstly, easier to say patrol. Okay, then you are looking at a population that needed to be supported because eventually Shah Jahanabad was coming of age. It was coming, you know, population was dr growing, driving, which means he needed a water source. The same reason why, see, most of our population is in the Gangetic Plains because rivers are a source of life. Such was the logic here also. Sure, Shamim, please do make sure to catch up the whole lecture later. Alright, thanks for joining Shamim. Alright, and you also have the weather which is more clement where the river water flows. Okay, so if you visit today, if you just go to say uh, Red Fort today, okay, so you see this, this is the rampart suppose, from where the Prime Minister makes his address on Independence Day. What does he do here, by the way? Just let me know very quickly, remind me. Does he unfurl the flag here or does he hoist the flag here? Because I have discussed this in the class. Let me know very quickly. Does the Prime Minister hoist it on Independence Day or unfurl it? The class shall let me know very quickly. We have done that. So, what you see is inside the Red Fort that there are water channels all around. Okay, Some water channels are obviously lost. Some are still there. Okay. So, this was supposed to be what? Because it's a fort, it needs all the resources at hand. You know, it's an impenetrable fort, which means you need water supply also. So, Yamuna was important from that point of view also. Good guys, Anjali, Deepak, good. Thank God, the class is following. See, you will remember this eventually. Alright. So, what you find today is, look at this. This is the one that I am talking about, that Bahadur Shah Zafar had built. Yes, if you have been to Delhi, you must have seen Aapne ye wala rasta traverse kiya hoga, for sure, 100%, okay? So, for those of you again, the people who are watching this, if you do not know the difference between hoist and unfurl, very quickly in 30 seconds, on Independence Day, what the Prime Minister does is, the flag is here, okay? This is the Prime Minister, he comes, the flag goes up, this is hoisting of flag, which means, the nation comes into existence. Whereas on Republic Day, Srimati Draupadi Murmu, what would she do? Well, the flag is already tied here. She just opens it on Republic Day. Okay, Honorable President here, unfurls the flag. Okay, just know these minor differences because you will not find this in any other information, any other book. So, this is important. You have Fort A, Fort B, the river in the middle. The river has a particular purpose. However, why is it? That say suddenly the river stopped flowing from here. What happened exactly? Why did it? Why did the river shift its course? Is Yamuna the only river to shift its course? Obviously not. Okay. कोई बात नहीं आरका जब आओगे आप देखना. Have a look. Have a look. Okay. Delhi is a very historical city. In fact, you should go and pay a visit to all these forts, monuments, museums. So much of learning experience. All the things that you see in NCERT books. Come visit the National Museum whenever you are here. You will see how those things come to life. You will remember it. Pictorial association karna important hota hai. Theek hai? All right. So, let's look at the changing course of river Yamuna. 
ओके ऑल्सो कॉल्ड एस कालिंदी ओके सो रिवर यमुना बिगैन टू चेंज कोर्स ड्यूरिंग द रेन ऑफ मोहम्मद शाह रंगीला दिस नेम अगेन फिगर्स प्रोमिनेंटली ऑल राइट सो यू सी दैट नाउ सडनली द रिवर इज चेंजिंग कोर्स एंड नॉट जस्ट सी यमुना मोस्ट ऑफ द रिवर्स ऑफ नॉर्दर्न इंडिया आर चेंजिंग कोर्स वाई इज दैट हैपनिंग अगेन वेल टू रीजन ओके सो विल कम टू द रीजन वी ऑल्सो फाइंड दैट ड्यूरिंग द नाइनटीन इलेवन वट हैपन इन नाइनटीन इलेवन गाइज उन्नीस सौ पांच में क्या हुआ था बेंगोल वॉज डिवाइडेड उन्नीस सौ ग्यारह में बेंगोल वॉज री यूनाइटेड द कैपिटल वॉज शिफ्टेड फ्रॉम विच प्लेस टू विच प्लेस द क्लास शेल लेट मी नो सो वंस द कैपिटल वॉज शिफ्टेड टू डेली किंग जॉर्ज द फिफ्थ इन ऑल हिज माइट एंड ऑनर ग्रैंड दरबार वॉज हेल्ड नो डेली दरबार सो नाउ इट वॉज डिसाइडेड दैट वेल गवर्नेंस नीड्स टू बी कैरिड आउट द कॉलोनाइजर्स नीड टू सो कॉल्ड गवर्न सो दे नीडेड प्लेसिस सो दे वे स्काउटिंग फॉर एरियाज जहां पर हम गवर्नमेंट बिल्डिंग बैठाएंगे वेर वी विल कंस्ट्रक्ट अ गवर्नमेंट बिल्डिंग सेंटर्स ऑफ पावर नो इनिशियली द होल प्लान वॉज टू डू इट इन से प्रेजेंट डे मुखर्जी नगर और सिविल लाइन्स ओके नियर से the university side okay so if you have any again if you have been to delhi you will realize that that area is little lower in elevation okay lower in elevation so that was the plan originally where the present day say delhi vidhan sabha is okay near that area in that civil lines mukherjee nagar area that was the area that was chosen for say all these power centers to come up rashtrapati bhavan or whatever was to be built there all these offices however what happened was that there was a massive flood in fact it was totally flooded 1911 same thing that we are seeing today okay anjali i think it was from calcutta to delhi not murshidabad to calcutta 1911 the capital shifted from kolkata calcutta then now kolkata to delhi okay so what you find is that after the transfer of the capital the area around kingsway camp which is present day mukherjee nagar civil lines vidhan sabha all of these areas that was completely flooded now obviously the english were like well this is not going to work out so they carried out some research and figured out that okay all of these areas are in the flood plains of yamuna okay flood plains of yamuna so this plan was dropped summarily and then they figured out another place the present day raisina hill where you have say the north block the south block ha uh, the president's estate prashtrapati bhavan you also have say just below raisina hill the new parliament that has come up the old parliament all india radio all of these major offices of the government of india were right there below raisina hill so finally that is the story of why raisina hill was chosen initially it was kingsway camp okay all these burari uh, sant nagar all of these areas okay so this was supposed to be the area for the buildings of the raj however since this area was in the flood plains of yamuna the proposal was shifted to raisina hill this in fact now just in front of the president's house you find a jaipur column go ahead and read about it today after the class go ahead and read about what the jaipur column is go and read about darbar hall two three things that you should be aware of what happens in the darbar hall of rashtrapati bhavan guys very important you know common sense and aware student should be aware absolutely you need to know What happens in the Darbar Hall? Very quickly, let me know. Batayi mujhe. Let's see. Have any of you had a chance to say visit Rashtrapati Bhavan ever? You know, if you have been on say guided tour of Rashtrapati Bhavan, you will know that the Darbar Hall is a a, a room of immense significance. Okay. So you there is in fact a throne type uh, seat that is kept there. Just behind it is a statue of Lord Buddha. and in that hall you find all the civil and in a military investiture ceremonies take place so for example say the ati vishisht seva medal param vishisht seva medal all of these military awards that are given honors that are given given by the president of india in this room the darbar hall at the same time padma awards the people's padma now that it is called you know to honor those individuals who have dedicated their lives for the society that also takes place in the darbar hall Okay, so go and read about it. Very important room. All right. So the changing course of River Yamuna. Now the changes in river course in northern India is not unusual. In fact, I am from Bihar. You know, my origin is from Bihar. So well, we know a lot about floods. Okay, 
in fact it's a major scourge of bihar you find rivers changing course frequently leaving people devastated property devastated you know so as someone from bihar we know what it takes to say combat floods how to live with floods and the same thing happened here northern india you often find rivers changing course by a lot in fact so if you consider say from 1700s up until say 2023 you find certain rivers have changed course by almost 30 to 35 40 kilometers okay so if this was flowing this way suddenly well in 200 years it's now going this way can you realize the problems of this now indian tectonic plate is moving northward you know this the indian plate the tibetan plate indian plate heading this way tibetan plate is sturdy strong rock structure indian plate pushing it himalayas rising which means the rivers tend to shift eastwards all right raisina hill is famous for this anjali raisina hill is famous because you have say uh, all of these president house south block north block the new parliament old parliament all of them are a part of the raisina hill have you see uh, heard of this beating retreat ceremony guys Oh hi Monica good to know good to know have you heard of the beating retreat ceremony where in say just after republic day after a couple of days all of these bands of the indian army the indian navy paramilitary delhi police all of them come together to have this gala festivity you know as it comes this that celebration comes to a close of the republic that is also held at the base of raisina hill next time you have a look at say any of these functions independence day republic day make sure you note down the location the environment around okay be absolutely sure because this is common sense so you find the tibetan plate is being pushed thus rising himalayas this has an effect on the course of river yamuna all right thereafter you find alluvial plains soft soil very easy to say quickly navigate and course correct so because you have alluvial soil soft and more amenable to changing river course okay raisina is a part of aravalli mountains i think is the tail of the aravalli mountains it's considered to be a tail okay if you go from say gurgaon to faridabad so there is this whole uh, that you find a uh, hilly structure that is considered to be the tail of uh, 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 the aravalli mountains okay so both yamuna and ganga have changed course you look at this by almost 35 kilometers in fact if you go say in um, western uttar pradesh okay say towards meerut side towards pilibhit if you have to go to there you will still find that uh, bridges that were built say in 1960s 70s the river has shifted course from there say around by 10 kilometers and they are just lying there anymore so you have high flowing speed rivers there sharda river again massive siltation changing course of the river okay so make a note of this that this was the problem that existed which is why you find that today yamuna does not flow from here okay yamuna has stopped flowing from here also all of this has been aggravated by the fact that there has been large scale construction on the flood plains of yamuna on the flood plains of yamuna okay without naming organizations because well we are civil service aspirants and not narrative builders so there are certain organizations who carried out functions on the flood plain of yamuna which also say compromise the sanctity of the flood plain okay illegal construction housing commercial all of that large scale exploitation has happened so there is a saying now uh, which i was reading on twitter in fact yesterday that and it's in hindi so i'll i'll just quickly uh, quickly just uh, translate it for you also so in hindi it goes like mera pani utarta dekh ye mat samajhna ki main uh, weak hu matlab main, main, i'm not that strong main yamuna hu lot ke phir aaungi you know which means that just because my water is receding don't take it as a sign of weakness i am the mighty river yamuna and i will eventually return to the place that i belong okay so this is what happened because the river started changing course people suddenly started taking it for granted that that land is ours eventually what happened large scale environmental destruction and in man versus nature or human kind versus nature there is obviously one winner this is what is happening 
so you have say the drainage system severely compromised okay flood plains pe you have created say buildings which means the rivers area is reduced so when the water volume comes high the river has no option but to go into these areas now oh deepak really good 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 yes i agree with you it shifts almost almost say every 5 to 10 years you will see that the river ganga which was say flowing this way is now suddenly flowing this way so this distance is the river that it has shifted its course all right in bengal which is known for its flood surprisingly precipitation is quite a bit low well sandeepan in northern bengal in north bengal especially from say kuch bihar siliguri new jalpaiguri the darjeeling hills karsiyong kalingpong you find that a lot of precipitation occurs so you have the rivers like uh, in north bengal again very quickly if i have to just tell you so in north bengal you find rivers like tista okay you find rivers like torsha all of these are fast moving rivers and what happens is because there there is a lot of river interlinking there all of these rivers are eventually interlinking in some manner in a natural manner which means water distribution is better there which is a major advantage say what the uh, uh, eastern rivers have that because there are many tributaries so the water flow can be quickly diverted right so this is the key here in northern rivers what you find is that the river interlinking is slightly lesser plus alluvial fl flood plains alluvial sand the eastern one is not that it's heavy siltation that happens there okay so two different uh, connotations all together theek hai so this is the first topic for you make sure that you know this name guys because half the janta of upsc knows uh, the red fort and the hole that it was a world heritage site in 2000 and this and that okay fine that is understood but what about the next fort the salim gad fort who built it all right have a look at this today after the class okay and if you so desire we'll go ahead and have a look at this book also you'll find the pdf of this online okay i can't share it because again copyright infringement so many infringements ethical issues this that so go ahead look for yourself be ethically responsible for your own actions but have a look at this pdf okay all right okay take a sip of your chai while i inform those who are joining me for the first time that guys well 22nd is when we close admissions for this one year program entire syllabus coverage from prelim still interviews i am a part of the english cohort so if you enjoy my way of teaching enjoy my way of explanation if it makes sense to you go ahead join this classes beginning on the 22nd every evening 6 pm and well if you use this code ba life which means bhuvan apurva life well what you get is eventually a discount of close to 40000 rupees 40000 bucks which is quite a lot okay so go ahead consider this it's being offered in three different languages english bilingual and hindi and i shall see you whenever and wherever you join right so the next topic now microplastics the article coming from down to earth go ahead and have a look at the article too after the class so what are microplastics now guys the name is self explanatory micro small plastics plastics so tiny plastic particles less than 0.5 mm in diameter please make a note of this okay make a note of this particular number so how do you categorize uh, microplastics lesser equal to or lesser than 0.5 mm now they are categorized into primary microplastics and secondary microplastics the primary ones are called microbeads okay so let's quickly understand very simple explanation what are microbeads the primary ones very tiny pieces of manufactured plastic that are added as exfoliants to health and beauty products so you have all these uh, shampoo conditioner face wash whatever beauty products health products that you use you find microbeads are added to that which are known as primary microplastics okay so they pass easily through water filtration systems end up in the ocean great lakes posing a threat to aquatic life now what happens this is a part of your gray water guys we have discussed what is gray water you take a shower the water that is going down the drain gray water wash your face brush your teeth gray water okay but if you were to say uh, go ahead and urinate or defecate that becomes black water so gray water you find the concentration of microbeads higher 
you're washing your face, shampoo, soap, all of that you are doing. Okay. So they will pass through, obviously. They go through in the drainage system, eventually find their way to lakes, then to rivers, then to oceans, and guess who is eating them? Your fishes, your say phytoplanktons. All of these are eventually consuming microplastics. In fact, the situation is so dire that right now you find microplastics in the depth of the ocean where say you had the titanic uh, submersible uh, finally collapse. Such is the prevalence of microplastics now. There is not a single area where microplastics have not been found. You will be surprised to know, in fact I was quite aghast you know, when I was reading about it, that microplastics are now found in the fetal uh, formation. So, a mother is pregnant, okay? The fetal, the fetus inside her, that is also exposed to microplastics. Such, it's, it's at the most secure and sanctity of places. Do you realize? What can be more secure than a mother's womb? And yet, you find microplastics there. So, it's ubiquitous, you know? This is the word that I can only describe to explain what it is ubiquitous which means found everywhere all right so they pass through the water filtration system end up to the aquatic life we eat the fishes guess what we are also consuming microplastics now the secondary microplastics are particles that result from the breakdown of larger plastic items so you have these plastic bottles cups huh, all these straws what happens eventually because plastic is not going to break down right so, eventually the action of heat and ocean or water, it just makes sure that it disintegrates. It does not say completely, obviously it can't go com away completely. It disintegrates into smaller, smaller particles. This also is consumed and affects a marine ecosystem. So, two kinds. One, which you and I use, health, beauty, products, all of that, primary. Secondary ones, the breakdown of larger ones into smaller ones. Got it? All right. So, the action of two is there, okay? Sun radiation and oceanic waves. So, again, if the question so asks you, which of the following affects the breakdown of secondary plastics into microplastics? And if you are given, say, four options, okay? If you are given, say, sun action, okay, water action, gravity, all of these four or five topics are given. Make sure that it's only two. It's just the action of sun plus water, nothing else, no gravity. No Coriolis force, all of that, nothing. It will only be there to uh, confuse you. Alright? Go forward. So, look at this now. This is how it all functions, guys. It's quite an eye-opening slide, in fact. Okay? So, what do you find? First, plastic waste, the secondary microplastics. The beauty care item, the primary microplastics. They go ahead, contaminate our water systems, our land systems, our soil. Guess what? Who is having them? Fish. Who is having the fish? You and I. Who gets affected? You and I. Similarly, once you have, it's gone into the soil, plants, finally in your food, finally you have it. Guess who is again getting affected? So, the primary and secondary microplastics are a kind of like a cyclical loop that you are looking at. The more you create, the more at risk you are. Right? the more at risk you are. So, look at the problems that are associated now, you know. I don't even want to like mention it, it's, it's so obvious. If you are eating plastics, it can't be good, straight up. You must have seen the photos of say, uh, cows and buffaloes on Indian roads, from whom, uh, f when you say, uh, did a post-mortem after their death, you find out that, okay, their stomach is full of plastic bags, okay. So, obviously, in the short term, 100% bad. But, you are, what you are realizing is that as humans start consuming more and more microplastics, what you are looking at is severe health issues that come with it. So, liver problem, brain problem, cognitive ability gone. Okay, look at this. Reproductive toxicity, immune problem, cancer risk. So, there is not even a, like a segment of your body that is unaffected. And yet, what you find is that microplastics are only increasing by the day. In fact, now you have certain areas in the ocean Say, uh, there is a, an area, I think, in the Atlantic Ocean, I believe, which is called uh, the, the plastic soup. Such is the huge area of that, uh, in the middle of the ocean, where all the plastics have converged and are just floating around on the surface of the, you know, the sea, the ocean. So, again, 
the problem is ubiquitous you can't do away with it unless you address the back end of it okay so let's go forward the major chemicals now what are present in microplastics the most important is bisphenol a which has been asked by the upsc previously it has been a previous year question something that the upsc loves to ask about bpa what is bpa what are the problems of it pacific garbage yes yes nalajana thanks for reminding me yes pacific garbage correct this whole huge area of plastic soup in fact that exists okay so bpa what you are looking at so you have the others in fact bpa phthalates triclosan all of these are fine understand bpa what is the function of bpa so bpa gives the flexibility the sturdiness to plastics that you can say uh, uh, use it and and still use it say not sustainably but for a long period of time without say breakdown in material bpa because it is hard bpa because it is flexible you know bpa so it is used to harden plastic subsequently leaches into food what happens no guys say you have a bottle of water okay now this is obviously a plastic bottle i'm asking about talking about so you have bpa in it now what do you find is if you have filled it up with water eventually there is going to be leaching of the bpa into the water which means percolation of that chemical into the water so you are obviously having microplastics every time you drink from that bottle in fact you must be aware if you are not i'll tell you say expecting mothers okay they are thoroughly in fact completely advised to not drink from the plastic bottle it's not that you and i are advised you and i should also look to completely do away with it but specially for say pregnant mothers lactating mothers senior citizens people with health risks they should drink from a glass bottle not a plastic bottle okay so if you have people around you you know your family who are say uh, of the conditions that i told you or are senior citizens or a small children toddlers infants say below the age of at least 14 15 never allow them plastic bottles okay causes alterations in the liver function insulin resistance look at this fetal development in pregnant women is affected ha huh? reproductive system and brain function is compromised all this happens why just because you are drinking from a water bottle also at the same time you must have realized many of us do this we will microwave our food in a plastic container ha huh? you will order from some hotel or restaurant have it say after 2 hours so you'll go and quickly microwave the food never do that essentially what is said is that if you microwave your food say for a 2 to 3 minutes what you are doing is increasing the number of microplastics by close to 100000 in it okay always reheat your food in a glass container never a plastic container don't eat your food in a plastic uh, say plate never do that it might look fancy colorful but it will kill you eventually theek hai ha correct okay so bpa can significantly shorten the breeding time of southern house mosquitoes the ca carrier of west nile vi virus this is in america by the way america and uh, the uh, latin america also west nile virus okay so this is the problem that not just say it gives us all the toxicity associated with bpa phthalates and all of that i told you triclosan brominated flame retardants bisphenol organotins forget all of that it is just going to kill you eventually if you are consuming plastics microplastics drinking eating all of this problem ha huh? all of this liver function insulin resistance reproductive system brain function brain function eventually you need you're going to appear for civil services stop having microplastics okay so look at the impact on the health now guys it is bad news not even one part of your body is unaffected by it. do you look at it right from your brain up until your reproductive system your thyroid your eyes your liver you should avoid microplastics in fact plastics like the plague avoid it it will take some effort it's a behavioral change that you have to eventually bring into yourself for example you go to buy fruits don't carry plastic bag okay carry in a thala in a uh, jute bag or a paper bag never do use plastic bags because eventually what you're doing see if there is sunlight lot of sunlight there what happens it's that sunlight is acting on the plastic also heat which means if there is leaching of any kind you are directly exposing yourself 
got it guys okay all right so have a look at this microplastics in human blood like i told you it's been found in human blood it's been found in fetal fetuses it's there's not even one place where microplastics are not found right from the highest uh, the uh, the altitude of himalayas to the depth of mariana trench everywhere clear okay so go ahead and look at this article from dte down to earth portal all right so if you understood the two topics that we have done so far river yamuna and red fort and the salimgarh fort and if you understood microplastics quickly go ahead and leave me a like very quickly go ahead and leave me a like leave me a comment whatever you find okay so how did microplastics become so ubiquitous which means prevalent continuous and rapid expansion of synthetic plastic production mismanagement improper fragmentation of plastic waste that obviously it is not just say our responsibility it is a lot to do with enforcement also from the supply side also so in spite of say several measures taken with several courts in fact outlawing plastics how is it that you still find plastics because the enforcement is low because eventually what happens as you and i as you and i we are the consumers so unless we are given a say sustainable replacement which is cost effective only then can you drive the behavioral change needed however what you realize is that say paper bags jute bags they are quite expensive if you have a shopkeeper who go if you go and tell him you know if you are this civil service aspirant and this shopkeeper here and he gives you a plastic bag you say no 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 and he tells you ha ye free mein hai bhaiya le jao nahi chahiye mujhe isme jute bag mein do and he gives he tells you ha 20 rupees extra do you realize this problem that it is not just cost effective why should i pay 20 rupees extra when something can be given to me for say at a minimal price or say no price so that needs to be incentivized by the government side rather than just say outlawing plastic bags or plastic products you should come up with substitutes which will be price point effective for the consumer hakim singh you are from assam karbi anglong oh great welcome welcome i have i have been to assam several times in fact it's one of my most favorite states especially when i go towards kaziranga manas side manas is unbelievable beauty guys okay can the class tell me which country does manas uh, sanctuary national park in fact shares its borders with which country nepal bhutan or china let me know very quickly if you haven't been to assam go ahead guys it's it's really good you, know? you will be amazed at the beauty of assam all right so what you are going to do reduce generation first segregate and recycle like we do wet waste soft waste combination of degradation mechanisms which means this incomplete degradation that happens because of sunlight and ocean that needs to be taken care of all right there needs to be a global treaty also okay there is no global treaty on plastics right now imagine that that's such an important such like an important topic you know and yet there is nothing in the global sense nothing probably one thing that comes closest is the mission life which talks about individual sustainable choices however like i told you the sustainable choices need to be price point effective okay further collaboration government industry individual what happens is one sec government and industry there is a lot of collaboration here but how do you address the individual that behavioral change needs to be driven from the point of view of sustainability you can't force or coerce the population suddenly to leave plastics overnight to kya main sare fruits ke hath mein leke aaunga you need to give me a substitute you know that's what needed good guys bhutan is the answer correct correct easy question tha ye to all right okay fine okay so now we come to the third aspect of our literature of our uh, uh, class this morning and this is an article from uh, the hindu okay i think this was there on uh, the 9th the 9th of this month so this is what i do guys you know <clears throat> eventually you will find that we do not let go of any topic throughout the week everything is covered okay just that we do it in depth we do it slowly i could do the same thing 10 topics per day repeat myself every day and you would not understand still at least that's what i'm planning to do i'm trying to do okay so the tamil nadu uh, education department has released pathu pattu 
make a note of this guys in fact i'll be sharing this pdf have a look at this especially from the exam perspective the pre perspective is a very important discussion so you have something called pathu pattu a collection of 10 idols one of the earliest sangam poetry collections so the tamil nadu government has come up with this pathu pattu okay so what is an idol first a short poem all that you need to know it's a short poem okay which is if often it talks about say the pastoral themes or the themes of daily life the struggles of daily life okay so the ideal is a short poem descriptive of some picture a scene incident associated with pastoral life now sangam age is probably one of the most important phases in the in the history of india not just southern india you know which is why when you see <clears throat> when you find say the prime minister going to whichever country or if you have been say following the man ki baat that he has you know every month he has this program a radio program called man ki baat and so you will find that he is always almost on a daily on a on a monthly basis he talks about the rich heritage and and traditions and culture of the tamil sangam age the tamil culture in fact so obviously why why is this important for us to understand because the prime minister is speaking about it as upsc aspirants you need to be aware end to end but more importantly as aware citizens you should understand that this was a period when there was a lot of knowledge sharing happening you know you're talking about an era which is far from today and yet you find is that uh, say how the greeks used to come together you know and say uh, like i've told you they had the first place called museum ka pehla uh, phase unhi ke paas tha where all the people would come together talk on the daily issues issues of intellectual uh, uh, connotations they would sit down discuss almost a replica of that is what you find in the sangam age also that there were three meetings okay three large meetings that happened and say people sages gods the most wisest of men and women all came together and then they came with some some particular morals and ideals some stories in narrative form that kind of give us the viewpoint of that era and what you find is that they are talking about say the most basic of fundamental of emotions fundamental of values okay so which is why a parallel could be drawn between the three meetings of the sangam era with say the greeks and and their intellectual ability and prowess and how it developed over time okay which is why it's important for us to understand so sangam age constitutes an important chapter no there were three sangams okay three meetings wherein all these wisest of men and women came together okay in ancient tamil nadu popularly called mucha changam okay and this flourished under the pandyas so you have the cholas the cheras the pandyas can someone tell me which animals were found on the flags of these kingdoms if you have seen this particular movie uh this recent movie had come where there was aishwarya rai bachchan i forget the name i forget the name of that movie i wanted to see it i i forgot the name but you will realize if you just see the movie you will be able to tell me which flag is there on the uh, which animal is there on the flag of say the choras the chelas the pandyas okay it's as simple as that we'll see okay this is again something you should know which animal is there on the flags of these kingdoms oh here it is so see here now ha huh? so the pandyas have fish on their flag the cholas have tiger on their flag the cheras have a bow and arrow on their flag excuse me ps1 yes yes correct madhusudan you i completely forgot it good morning hakim yes nala jana tamil speaking people are mostly found in asian countries correct nala jana which is why you see the southern part of that particular time there was a lot because they were extremely good naval forces also the cholas cheras pandyas were extremely good naval forces which is you which is why you find a lot of interaction happening during this period say with the period uh, with the areas in say southeast asia as we know it today indonesia and all of those areas bali huh? which is why this migration happened which is why say you find today in singapore or on all of these places that probably the mayor will be of tamil origin people went there ages ago made their life indian origin yet a part of it 
okay it's bow tiger and fish monica is correct okay have a look at this also guys make sure that you know about this the animals or the signages that are present on the flags okay so the first sangam which was held at then madurai which temple is there in madurai guys there's a very famous temple in madurai what's the name of that temple quickly let me know so the first sangam was in madurai which was attended by gods and legendary sages but then again no literary works are available so the so the story so goes that not just the gods and the sages the most wisest of individuals attended the first tamil uh, the sangam meeting okay right the wisest of them attended this however you do not have any record of it second one you find was held at kapadapuram meenakshi temple correct so the second was at kapadapuram where all the literary works had perished except tolkapiyam tolkapiyam is important why again favorite question of say all the coaching institutes they will ask you once or the other in their mock tests about tolkapiyam okay can someone let me know what this book talks about does it talk about say grammar does it talk about warfare does it talk about ethics or does it talk about uh, none of the above let me know tol kapiam kiske bare mein baat karta hai all right the third sangam was again at madurai which was founded by mudathithur maran it was attended by a large number of poets who produced voluminous literature but only few survived the most important of all of these the three sangam meetings how will upsc ask you a question three options where was it held how many of the above are correct one only two only three only none of the above make sure at least you know the location where was tolkapiyam which one was attended by the gods and sages of which no record exists and again third one basics yaad rakho baki sab apne aap fall it will fall into place all right now look at this the collection of sangam literature includes tolkapiyam etitogai patupattu okay i can't uh, i don't know how to say this pathini nen killa kanu whatever it is i i'm i'm sure it is very important but i just it's beyond my ability to pronounce it correctly okay and the two epics you will note this sila pathigram and mani mela galai theek hai grammar correct lekam correct correct theek hai so tol kapiyam was of authored by tol kapiyar the earliest set of tamil literature work on grammar but it also provides information on the political and socio economic conditions okay written by which person tol kapiyar what does it talk about as the class has rightly pointed out grammar but also political and social conditions of that time what existed during that time okay then you have the etitogai or the eight anthologies what are anthologies short stories collection of short stories is called anthology same thing here consists of eight stories the patu patu or 10 ideals consists of 10 works both of them divided into two main groups aham which is to with love and puram which is to do with valor so the stories the anthology they are normally to do with say either love or warfare so some stories i'll tell you like i have just gone through some of them okay like i would like to read in fact i've been looking for a good translation for tirukkural's book the the tirukkural book but i haven't found it yet so what what most of the stories talk about is very interesting you know so there is a story say about a a a person he has wives the wives bear him sons eventually he chooses one son and does not choose the other son life goes on say uh, uh, say 20 30 years down the line the second son comes back to the house in effort to win the love and affection of his father you see so it's talking about the most basic of human uh, feelings and emotions okay if you are genuinely interested i suggest go ahead and research about it in fact it's it's a repository of knowledge okay it's not for nothing that say uh, you have these kind of individuals tirukkural and all of them that are universally accepted as people who are very wise you know go ahead and make yourself aware of this so this name that i can't pronounce contains 18 works mostly dealing with ethics and morality okay most important is tirukkural written by tiruvalluvar 
incredibly important book in fact as students of civil services if you can find obviously if you are from the tamil nadu uh, uh, state you will know tamil so you'll be able to read it for those of you who do not know that language go ahead and if you can find a good english translation of this book well firstly let me know and then you can buy it for yourself also okay so silapathi gram okay written by ilango adikal and mani megalai written by sitalati satnar you'll have to remember these guys there's no other way okay there's no other way i can give you lots of these uh, small small uh, names to remember okay that uh, i ate the pizza during lunch hour remember it what happens is exam time pe sab nikal jata hai i ate the pizza during lunch hour that is good for gaining likes and views and uh, retweets but it has no tangible value for the student how many of them can you remember eventually okay so best is make sure that you know the overarching philosophy of uh, this particular uh, sangam h know about tol kapiyam know about the name that i can't pronounce and the other books all right so the five great tamil epics you will make a note of this important slide from the examination perspective because the previous slide has been asked by the upsc but this questions have not been asked yet which means the probability the possibility is there which means you are best advised to go ahead and look at it okay silapathi gram like i told you written by ilango adikal it writes about sangam polity and society important okay mani megalai written by satanar again polity and society then you have chivaka chintamani okay of a warrior prince and valayapati the one that i was talking about guys the story of a father with his two sons yes you will find a whole uh, annotated uh, story on on a pdf read the story it will not take you more than the whole at least the gist of it not more than 5 to 10 minutes and you will understand how uh, it actually talks about the most basic of human emotions and values and ideals and you will be surprised to know that those values and ideals that existed then are still in practice today that nothing much has changed in so far as how we interact say within a family or with a society or with your friends it talks about those values those ideals okay epics are books that are considered to be of immense value so for example in india you have the two epics mahabharat and ramayan which give you the whole story format of a larger narrative okay those are called epics so in uh, the tamil tradition you have the five big epics okay because again tamil literature is it's it's quite vast it comes before the advent of hindi language in fact the only language that can be compared in terms of say uh, how old it is is probably sanskrit and even then you realize that tamil is spoken by a large amount of people so in spite of that uh, belonging to an ancient era that it is still in practice today and is spoken by a large amount of people whereas sanskrit is spoken in pockets not many not as much as say tamil mahakavya correct correct arka you are absolutely correct in bengali it is called mahakavya theek hai then you have kundala kesi authored by natha kuthanar it talks about the tamil buddhist epic okay why do you think this is here suddenly can someone quickly guess for me why is it that a buddhist epic suddenly makes its way into tamil uh, uh, sangam h let me know your answers okay then you'll be able to figure out see art and culture the view to the best way to understand it it, it is in a story format if you go ahead with the intention of mugging it up you know ki main rat ke samajh lunga art and culture to nahi ho payega okay it wouldn't work you will have to understand it as a story so if you suddenly find this in your notes go ahead this evening and figure out the answer to this as to why suddenly you find buddhist epic being a part of sangam literature sangam h okay that's how you are going to study uh, art and culture guys all right so make a note of this slide because from the pre perspective i can assure you that questions can be easily framed from this and those will be the differential questions guys the question that not many people will attempt but if you so attempt you are actually gaining yourself an extra 3 to 5 uh, 3 marks aram se which the others are not getting okay because in an examination there are two kinds of questions one is the low hanging fruit ha huh? the questions from say all these lakshmi ka and spectrum book and this book and that book which everyone reads if you make mistakes there bye bye means 
and then you have the differential questions which no one reads no one answers but by god if you do that prelims to clear arams so this you can't mistake you can't make mistakes here but for this if you answer correctly this is going to get you that rank how do you get rank because everyone is studying the same books everyone is aware of what tol kapiyam is and who was tol pakyar and all of that everyone is aware of what is on the flag of chora chera pandya what's different in your knowledge theek hai all right so i think that is it ha huh? so that brings to the end of these three uh, chapters these three topics that i had for you make sure that you take a note of the red fort topic okay especially the gates that are existent there okay make sure from the second topic that we did uh, that was uh, regarding uh, what was it microplastics go ahead and note about the effects of microplastic and its difference from nanoplastics these are the smaller microplastics okay so go ahead and read about nanoplastics also not a lot of difference only size difference is there otherwise the story is the same you know it's not going to make us strong and worthy it's going to kill us okay so that we come to the end of this class one hour of intense session your daily morning dose of news analysis before you leave me my dear student i know you have a rush you are in a rush but leave me a like if you like this class leave me a comment if you did not like this class i again request you leave me a comment i can only improve okay and uh, i'll see you guys on monday morning tomorrow on sunday after 1 pm i will be uploading around 10 questions or 15 questions roughly of only of the topics that we have discussed in the past week so that will give you an idea of what you are to study from the point of view of questions arka aapko main bata raha hu aap agar hamare sath hain if mains is a problem we can assure you mains will not be a problem it's it's just analysis and answer writing analysis i know takes time to come it's a compound effect when it comes to analysis you know that interlinking takes time answer writing i have already started giving questions on uh, here and my telegram channel many students are answering arka i'd also suggest ki aap bhi likhiye theek hai all right thank you monica thank you coder all of you guys who were so warm and nice to me this entire week asking me questions interacting learning together with me thank you for joining i'll see you guys on monday morning 8 am uh, madhusudan to answer your question uh, so madhusudan has sent me a, a, a suggestion saying that on my thumbnail why don't i say write the topics that we are going to discuss well i would have ideally like to do that but the problem is that since we start early 8 am and i start around say 3:30 am with the newspaper uh it wouldn't be it doesn't give me time to say ask my uh fellow colleagues here to give that kind of change so but i'll see, still try and run it with, uh, past my management see how we can do this make it more efficient for you make it much more relevant for you and so madhusudan i'll i'll keep you informed on the progress of your suggestion theek hai okay thank you guys thank you so much have a wonderful weekend join me tomorrow on my telegram channel after lunch as 10 to 12 questions based on the topics that we have discussed throughout this week will be discussed and put before you if you have any particular doubts there you can reach out to me this is my email id most of the students are in contact with me directly with their problems their suggestions and i welcome all of that you know because the whole point of this exercise is that whoever is watching this right now live or later should completely benefit from it there should be take away from it aap mera bhashan sunne nahi aaye ho yahan pe theek hai to exam point of view se aapko koi bhi help chahiye reach out to me okay thanks everyone lekam arka coder monica and the rest all of you that are watching my silent audience thank you so much i shall see you tomorrow morning not tomorrow monday morning 8am till then stay safe